in this video, we're basically going to talk about the types of conversion bonds. So we have what we call polar conversion bonds and also what is known as non-polar conversion bonds. Okay, so the first statement we can look at is the fact that when you're talking about non-polar, there is equal sharing of electrons in the bonds. Okay, so equal sharing of electrons in the bond. So we know that conversion bonds involve sharing of electrons. So that is, if you talk about nitrogen existing atomically, so we understand that there's sharing of electrons between the two nitrogen atoms. You can talk about oxygen, there's also sharing of electrons. So now, equal sharing of electrons is what we call non-polar conversion bonds. In a bond where there is equal sharing of electrons, we know that a bond consists of two electrons. Okay? So these two electrons, if they are shared equally, it's a non-polar conversion bond. So there's an aspect of now looking at electronegativity, okay, which basically determines whether it's going to be polar or non-polar. So in a case where you talk about highly different electronegativity elements, for example, carbon and fluorine have got a high difference in terms of electronegativity. So electrons tend to spend more time on fluorine. So you notice something here. Despite them, they've contributed each a single electron to the bond. But the electrons tend to spend more time around fluorine than carbon. That is what polar means. Okay. So going back to our non-polar conversion bonds, where there's equal sharing of electrons. Electrons sh are shared equally between the atoms in a bond. So the first example is where you're talking about atoms of the same element like nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, all these are non-polar since they involve the same element. So there's equal sharing of electrons. So, so not only is non-polar restricted to same element, but examples, other examples involve carbon and hydrogen. So these are hydrocarbons. Carbon and hydrogen bond is also non-polar. There's equal sharing of electrons between carbon and hydrogen. You can also talk about other examples. Brain, chlorine are also other examples of equal sharing of electrons between the bond. So it's not like you get to guess this. This is something that you basically get to calculate. So whenever the difference in terms of electronegativity, if you look at the periodic table, so there are also values of electronegativity assigned to each element. So when the difference is less than 0 0.4 or equal to 0 0.4, so 0 0.4 or less tells you it is what? It is non-polar. Okay, I can give you an example. So the electronegativity of carbon is 2.5, that of hydrogen is 2.1. So the difference is 0 0.4. So that tells us it is non-polar. Now going to the polar conversion bonds. So I've looked at an example of carbon and fluorine. So carbon has got an electronegativity value of 2.5, fluorine has got 4. If you subtract 4 minus 2.5, what value do you expect to get there? So a difference is 1.5. So we know 1.5 is greater than 0 0.4. So that is a very high difference in terms of electronegativity. Okay? So that implies that in a bond between carbon and fluorine, electrons are going to be spending more time around fluorine atom. They've all contributed a single electron, but the electrons will be spending more time towards the fluorine because electronegativity is that desire to have electrons. Okay? That's what electronegativity is. So in such a case, there is now there are partial charges now. That's what makes it to be called polar. Okay? It is charged now. So where they are spending more time, it is on a ID negative atom. And then carbon is going to be partially positive. That's the basic idea. So those are partial charges. So that this actually explains why OH is also an example of, of such a bond. So there's a high difference between oxygen and hydrogen. So in such a case, hydrogen is the one that is more electronegative than hydrogen. Oxygen is more electronegative. So this even explains why we have formation of hydrogen bonds due to high difference in electronegativity. 
in water. Okay. So basically, when it comes to polar covariant bonds, whenever the difference is higher than 0 0.4 all the way up to 0 to 1.8, it tells you it is a polar covariant bond. 0 0.4 or less, it's non-polar covariant bonds. And these are some of the examples that you can actually have on mind. So in conclusion, we've got two different types of covariant bonds. Polar covariant bonds are non-polar. Non-polar, there's equal sharing of electrons. They are not charged. So that's why we say it's non-polar. For a polar one, we expect existence of partial charges due to high difference in, electro in electronegativity. Okay? So non-equal sharing of electrons is what we call polar covariant bonds. And these are some of the examples that we can look at. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.